Hi everyone, it's Kamen, and this is a 14th episode in the series dedicated to create a cryptocurrency trading bot in Elixir. In this episode, it's time to bring up the big guns. We will look into macros and how to use them. And you know the drill, don't forget to like and subscribe, otherwise, enjoy. In this episode we will look into how we could utilize macros to shrink the code inside the streamer and the naive applications. At this moment they have a copy pasted code that is responsible for supervising the, the dynamic supervision trees for both uh, the symbols and the streamers. So we will utilize macros just by moving the logic from there to the macro and we will bring up a new library that will store all that code. So one warning to you, if you are using macros, just watch out. It's a very easy to get it very complex. And if you are after job security, fine by me, you know, but if you are not an evil person, uh, you know, just, just watch out. Otherwise, let's jump to the code. We will start by creating a new non-supervised app called Core inside our umbrella. Inside it, we will create a new module called the Service Supervisor where we will place all the common code from Dynamic Supervisor modules. As previously mentioned, we will start with an empty module and move all the starting, stopping and auto-starting related code from the naive Dynamic Symbol Supervisor to it. We can now focus on updating copied functions to be more generic, first by updating their names. We will also inline the starting of the symbol supervisor function as it's used just once. Back in the dynamic symbol supervisor we can update the empty start, stop and auto start functions to point to the core service supervisor module. We will also need to update the shutdown function to use the functions from the service supervisor module and remember to make them public as they were private before. As now the core application is making queries, we need to add the Ecto to its dependencies. In a similar fashion, we need to update the naive application's dependencies as it now uses the core application. At this moment our implementation is fully operational with all the code inside the core service supervisor. We can confirm that by starting and testing it using the interactive shell. The problem with the current implementation of the service supervisor is that it relies on hard-coded modules from the naive application and that obviously will be a problem when we will want to use it inside the streamer application. We will look into places where those modules are used and we will refactor the code to accept them as arguments. This change will have a knock-on effect on all the colors so we will bubble up that change to the color which will either be application specific module or it needs to get this as an argument as well. We will run a few paths like that and we should be able to eliminate all references to the naive module.
At this moment, ignoring a single line where we are referring to the naive leader function, there are no references to the naive application. We can open the Elixir interactive shell and confirm that everything works as expected. All the start, stop and auto start related functions inside the dynamic symbol supervisor are a boilerplate that we would normally need to implement for every service of this type. This is exactly the place where we could leverage the use macro to generate that code for us. For consistency we will provide both the start link and the init functions so it will be less confusing. As the service supervisor doesn't need any custom logic in neither of those functions, we will just delegate them to the dynamic supervisor module. To figure out what is happening, let's look at the three snippets of code on this screen. First, the dynamic symbol supervisor module is using a core service supervisor, so it will require that module, plus it will call using macro from that module. So, if you are new to macros, what that macro really means? Like, what's the difference between macro and a function? So the main difference is that macro is returning AST. AST is a, basically a description of a code. It's a special value that describes a code that should be on compile time pasted to the final implementation. So here, how we are achieving AST. We are using a quote macro to convert everything from inside of its body, which is this line, to AST using quote, which is basically then returned and then it's compiled into a dynamic symbol supervisor as we would write it. So basically writing this and writing this is exactly the same. But then we have all those functions, all those boilerplates that we put inside the dynamic symbol supervisor. If we will move them here, they will be on compile time pasted there as we would write them. But we can spice them up with some dynamic values like naive repo, or anything else that we want to do. So, so at compile time, just by using the core service supervisor, we will inject to our implementation different functions that will be specific to the application. Back inside the dynamic symbol supervisor, we will pass all the dynamic values that will be used to generate application specific functions. The options are passed to the macro as the first keyword list, so we will need to retrieve them one by one. Next we will move the start, stop and auto start functions out of the dynamic symbol supervisor straight to the body of the quote macro inside the use macro. We will convert all the hardcoded modules to the compile time values by using the unquote function. Next we can generate simplified versions of the helper functions used by the shutdown function. As we moved start, stop and auto start functions from the naive application to the macro, we need to rename them so they will be generic, but this will cause further complications in both the naive supervisor where auto start is called by the task and the naive module where we delegate calls to the start and stop functions.
This finishes our work on both the Naive application and the Service Supervisor module. We can quickly test that everything works and we can move on to the Streamer application where we will also use the Core Service Supervisor module. And we got it, we used the use macro to shrink the amount of code that we have in the streamer and the naive applications. So the macro is auto-generating the custom code per application just by passing the arguments to it. So this looks all nice and cool, but you can figure out that as soon as this will grow, for example, the log messages aren't that great. If we would like to add like a string like streaming or trading, that will need to be passed through all those functions, nested functions. So that wouldn't be a great deal. It would be a sixth argument. There's five already, so it's already horrible. But for example, think about the data warehouse application where we are not querying by symbol, but we will query by topic. So the table will have a topic column that we will select by. So now we can figure out that we will need to pass a column field, dynamic column field, through all those functions, and it gets worse as much as as far as you, you go further with that implementation. In the next episode, we'll look into a proper way to handle this situation, which is using the registry. So I left this episode for educational purposes because it's cool to know macros and know how to use them in even this very limited way. So if you like those episodes, don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, see you in the next episode.